Okay guys, I'd like to uh, move on now in this little unit to talk about something in uh, circular motion that's completely different from what we've been doing. Uh, and uh, that's something called tangential velocity. I want to start off by talking about tangential velocity. Um, before I get into it, let's just think about this word tangential. You can see the root word in there is tangent. Uh, and just so you remember what a tangent is, this this might make more sense to you later why this uh, why this is relevant. But a tangent is if you have a circle here, if you have a line that touches that circle in only one place, that looks a little bit more like a chord. Let's try that here. Tangent. A, a line that touches a circle in, in only one point is called a tangent line. Um, and the relevance of that. Uh, we'll come in a little bit later, but this is tangential velocity. Um, we'll get back to that picture in a little in a little bit. So, um, one of the really interesting things about tangential velocity is here's where we're going to see why it's so it was so helpful to have gone through the the pains of um, defining radian measure. So we spent a lot of time talking about radians. Um, and the whole point of radians, if you remember, just to re refresh your memory, is that radians give you a relationship between the distance, the physical distance around the circle or circumference, what we called arc length, um, and the radius of the circle, r. So the linear distance around the circle is related to the radius of the circle, r. Um, and, and, and that ends up uh, being really helpful. And, and before we actually get into tangential velocity, I want to explain why that's so helpful. For instance, I might want to know if I had, um, let's say I have a, a bicycle tire here. Here's a bicycle tire. And maybe I know that the radius of the bicycle tire, the radius here, R, is 60 centimeters. And maybe I know that it's this bicycle tire has turned a certain amount. Maybe it has gone through, it has turned. Delta theta is, let's say, I don't know, we just make up a number for simplicity's sake. Let's say it's 10 radians. You might wonder, well, how far has the bike gone? Right? If, if you should be able to figure out, if you know how much the wheel has turned and you know how big the wheel is, you should, figure, you should be able to figure out how far is the tire gone. Um, and it turns out that's really, really simple because of this radian measure. If this were, if this measurement right here were 10 degrees, it would be a lot harder to figure out how far the bike has gone. But since we know that this delta theta is given in radians, then I can really simply say that the linear distance delta x, this is the linear distance traveled by the bike, is simply delta theta 10 times the radius in meters, which would be in this case 0.6. So, in this particular case, 0.6 times 10 would be 6 meters. All right, so in other words, because I've gone through the trouble of defining the angular displacement in radians, it's really, really easy for me to determine the linear displacement. Okay, all I had to do here was take uh, linear dis the angular displacement and multiply by r. In other words, the linear displacement delta x equals the angular displacement delta theta times r. This is a really handy relationship. If this delta theta is in degrees, this does not work. This equation will not work if delta theta is in degrees. This will not work if delta theta is in revolutions. But it does work if delta theta is in radians. So uh, we can use this, this fact, hopefully that makes some sense to you, we can use this fact to uh, now go ahead and relate if I know now that the uh, how fast this tire is spinning, if I know the omega or angular speed of the tire, then I should be able to figure out the linear speed of the tire, and therefore I should be able to figure out the linear speed of the bike. So, in general, then, so I'm going to say therefore because of the, by the same logic that we just employed here, now I can say that the linear speed is related to the angular speed. Therefore, linear speed, which is v, right, is related to the angular speed, 
which is omega, measured in radians. Okay, so the, because of this, since since the since the linear distance is related to the angular, or the linear displacement is related to angular displacement, linear speed is related to angular speed. Uh, I'm 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 going to show you the exact equation for that in a minute. But first of all, I want to revisit this word, tangential velocity. Well, the tangent is a line. It's a line on a circle, and it turns out that when we're dealing with linear speed, when we're dealing with a linear speed for a system that's in circular motion, we call that tangential speed because it's li it's linear, like the tangent is a line, but it's related to a circle. A tangent is a line touching a circle. Tangential velocity is linear velocity in a circular reference frame. So let's go ahead and point that out. So we're going to use this word. So tangential velocity. Scroll down a bit here. Tangential velocity is a linear velocity. in a rotational system. Okay, well what, what does that mean? Well, to try to maybe make that a little bit clearer, let's imagine that we have a rotating platform. We've thought a lot about merry-go-rounds, right? So here's a here's a merry-go-round. I'm actually gonna make that try to make that a little bit bigger if I can. Oh terrible. It's hard to draw big circles here. All right, one more time. It's going to have to do. So here's my circle. This is a merry-go-round. And, and uh, here's the center of the merry-go-round. And let's imagine we have two points on this merry-go-round. Let's have a point here. This will be point A. We have a point here. This is point B. And this is a merry-go-round. And maybe somebody's standing at point A and somebody's standing at point B. And let's say that the merry-go-round is going around, let's say that it has an angular speed, omega, that's this way. So it's rotating counterclockwise. That's the positive direction. Well, this point right here, a person standing at this point, has a tangential speed, right? Person A, person A right here, is moving at angular speed, omega. Person B is also moving at angular speed, omega. They have the same angular speed because and the amount of time it takes A to do one full ro one full revolution, okay, two pi radians, B will also have done two pi radians. So A and B, both A and B have the same angular speed, the same omega. Okay, since they're on the same platform, they have the same angular speed. But it should be obvious to you that person A is moving a hell of a lot slower than person B. Because if this thing is rotating around, maybe it goes around once every three seconds. Well, in three seconds, person A is only doing this little circle here. Whereas person B is traversing this much bigger circle. So since person B is going to go a much greater distance in the same amount of time than person A, person B has a larger linear speed. So we would say uh, B has a greater, I'm going to run out of space there, has a greater tangential speed. than A. Okay, and by tangential speed, I mean the linear speed. B is moving faster. Maybe I should make note of that. This, what I mean by this is person B is moving faster. Okay, greater distance in the same amount of time. So person B is actually traveling faster than person A. So that's what I mean by tangential speed. Um, so there's a, in other words, if we think about it here, we get back to this idea of the linear speed, which we're now calling tangential speed. Here's that word, tangential speed. The linear speed or tangential speed is related to the angular speed, 
All right. Well, let's go back to A and B. What is it about B? What is it about person B that gives person B a greater tangential speed? Well, maybe you can see that it's because person B has a bigger radius, right? This distance, the radius for person B is a much bigger radius than the radius for person A. The radius for person A is a smaller radius. And it turns out, just like before, if we notice that the, the right here, the linear displacement is related to the angular displacement times the radius. Similarly, the linear speed, the tangential speed, V tan, let me write that out, V tan, this means tangential speed, is equal to the angular speed omega times R. Okay, so this is now the the equation that we've been working to, to sort out here. This is the tangential speed. V tan means tangential speed. Is equal to the angular speed times the radius. So person B has a greater tangential speed than person A because there's a greater radius. So because B has a bigger radius. Okay. They have the same omega, right? The omega was the same for A and B, but the radius for person B is larger, so person B is moving faster. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, well, let's think about the bike tire again. I, I, I should now be able to figure out if I know, based on this equation, if I know how fast the bike tire is spinning, and I know the radius of the bike tire, I should be able to figure out how fast the bike is going. So for instance, um, for example, let's do a little quick example. Maybe we go back to that bike tire. So the bike tire, the bike tire before has a radius of 60 centimeters of radius 60 centimeters is rotating at let's say 7.2 radians per second okay so now I know that the bike tire has a radius of 60 centimeters I know that's the R value right? that's this and I know it's rotating at 7.2 radians per second that's the angular speed well, now you might wonder, how fast is the bike moving? Okay, and it turns out this is now pretty simple to calculate. I know the omega, I know the r. So V tan is the omega, 7.2, times the radius, which is 0 0.6. 7.2 times 0.6. And that's going to be uh, 4.32 meters per second. So there you go. Simply based on the radius and the omega, I can figure out how far the bike's gone. Once again, I'm going to point out, this would not work if omega were not measured in, in radians. If we were back to that savage system of using degrees to measure an angle, this equation would not work. So this only works if omega is in radians. So hopefully you're, again, hopefully you're getting an appreciation for the fact that all that, that work to, to get comfortable with radians is, is now paying dividends for us. Okay, the last thing I want to point out, one more thing I want to point out here, hopefully you've made some sense of this equation. Uh, we could go through the exact same logic to talk about another tangential or linear quantity, and that's tangential acceleration. Okay, that's tangential acceleration. Which is to say that an object, if, if an object is um, spinning faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, not only is it undergoing an angular acceleration, alpha, but it's also speeding up in the linear sense. So it's also undergoing a tangential acceleration. Um, so this is a linear acceleration.
in a rotating system. So for instance, if we had that merry-go-round again, here's our merry-go-round. That's the center of the merry-go-round and maybe we've, we think we can think about this point right here, right? If this merry-go-round starts to pin, spin faster and faster and faster, in other words, if I now say that there's an angular acceleration alpha, well, if this thing's spinning faster and faster and faster, then a person at this point is going to be moving faster and faster and faster in the linear sense. They're going to speed up. So there's a relationship between the uh, linear acceleration and the angular acceleration. And just like before, we're, maybe you're starting to pick up on it, it's all about the radius, right? It's all about r. So what I can say now is the, the linear acceleration, a tan, that's tangential acceleration, is equal to the angular acceleration alpha times r. So that's our second equation here. Okay, tangential acceleration is equal to angular acceleration times r. And once again, this will only work if this guy here is in radians, okay? Well, specifically radians per second squared, but it's got to be in radians. If this is in degrees, equation doesn't work. If it's in revolutions, equation doesn't work. So we need to be in, in radians for that equation to, to hold. All right, um, hopefully you followed that. Uh, we, a couple new equations in here, some, some interesting concepts. Uh, we'll delve into the concepts probably in more detail in class, uh, and we'll definitely do some practice with the math. So uh, see you next time.